Hello and welcome, PML fans, to PML Draft Center. I'm your host, Admin Joe, along with co host, Admin Dusty. And right now, make sure you go watch all week Hello. six battles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> make sure to go watch all six week battles because this is getting intense. All the records we're about to show you are spoilers if you have not seen the games yet. So make sure you go watch those, then come back and enjoy this. And now we're going to start. As you can see, the Kanto division has three people with four and two records, only being uh, separated by differential. Of course, BSG being plus 17 uh, puts him as the front runner. And the Chartriots being plus two and the Toros being plus three put them at the tie for second and third, most likely battling each other. Unless one of them end up losing and the New Zealand Kings end up winning their game, uh, that could make a change. Other than that, uh, other teams in the Kanto division seem to not be making the playoffs this season. And Dusty, tell us about the Alolan side. I would love to, but I don't seem to have that picture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I will go ahead and do it real quick. Um, the Lola side, we have clear front runners in the Rapidash and the Gators, both being five and one. Gators, of course, have the the upper hand with the plus fifteen differential over the plus fourteen. But we seem to have a four way battle for the third spot. As you can see, the Blades, Tyranitars, and the Giraclones all have a three and three record, and the Knights having a two and four record. Since the Knights have to play uh, the Tyranitars, and if the other two teams lose, depending on who they have to play, if it's a three-way tie, it all comes down to differential, which is why I've been saying all season that differential is very important. Uh, <clears throat> as of right now, the Jirachi clones are in the best spot with the positive differential over the other three and three teams. But if the Jirachi clones can get a loss and Dusty get a big win, or potentially the other two teams lose at the same time, the Knights can go, or even if Dusty wins and Jirachi Clones lose, the Blades have a chance of going, or if Dusty does lose, then Morgan has a good chance of going if the Jirachi Clones do not win their Week 7 game. So, that's a lot of intense shit that's happening for the playoff race. Yes. And to tell you how we got there, we're going to do a quick recap of our Week 6 games. So we're going to start with the Jiracha Clones versus Grand Bulls. And for this game, the Jiracha Clones won. And I feel like they had, they got uh, early momentum, but they almost lost all their momentum when uh, they tried to boost uh, Char X in front of a strong dragon. Yeah. And got obliterated. Yeah, I was uh, I actually was kind of not excited when this first started because we saw the usual opening uh, sleep powder quiver dance. Um, but he made a, a, a kind of a few questionable plays there. He kept trying to hurricane when drought was in play, which cut the accuracy in half. So I was kind of worried there. I think he picked up on it and switched to bug buzz after a try or two, I think. That's interesting. I didn't know a drought caused Hurricane to lose accuracy. Yeah, um, Rain Dance will actually boost it to 100%, and Drought cuts it in half. Okay. I knew about the Rain Dance part. I didn't know about the Drought one. Yeah. <clears throat> but then uh, Charizard took advantage of it with a Flare Blitz. So he, he made up for it after he figured out what was going on. Oh, yeah. The only poor mistake he made was leaving Char X in on that Draco Meteor from Turtonator. Yeah, yeah, that hurt. But um, for the Grambles, they played good to slow down the momentum to that point. But it did hurt himself giving that Charizard X the Sun boost. But did a good job taking it out pretty quick with that Turtonator. Yeah, well then that, I think it was Life Orb Excadrill came into play and swept up everything else. Yeah, I believe there was a Sandstorm up somehow. Which gave him that speed boost. Yeah. And then life orb, and then, yeah, basically yeah, took after, everything um, out. 
after Charizard fell, he threw in a uh, Hippopotas for a turn and set up the Sandstorm. So he sacrificed one differential that set up the sweep doing that. Yeah. So, in the end of the day, it was made worth and got, got him to that 3-3 three and three record so he could be in that playoff race along yeah. with y'all. But, um, yeah, if uh, Grambles could have had some kind of answer for Drill, maybe it would have been a little different story, but Nonetheless, they lost to that drill. Yeah. And then the next game we have is the Knights versus Blades. This is between you and Matt. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, Matt's my real life best friend, so it was it was kind of fun. Uh, our teams were very evenly matched. Uh, uh, as you, you can, guys can probably see, I won with one Pokemon remaining. It was very back and forth. Yeah, I had um, that, um, both had stally plays that countered pretty well. Yeah, um, I got lucky, his calm phase leech seed missed twice, but then his Torterra's quick claw was going off like crazy. Um, and I don't know if you guys have watched a lot of Matt's videos, but his como o when it gets that, uh, Comonium Z off is a force to be reckoned with, so I did have to scarf Hydreigon, and I had to give it Draco Meteor just to be absolutely sure. And since you brought up the Como, -O, I feel like he made a huge misplay with it against your slow king or your slow bro. Um, I didn't understand why he taunted when he could have just two hit KO'd you, and that was it. Yeah, I thought about that too. Fortunately, at that taunt, I was already attacking, so I was trying to psychic it down. So it didn't hurt me too bad, but uh. Yeah, I was curious. I think it's because I protected first turn and he didn't want me to probably slack off the second turn. That's a tactic I've been doing. <coughs> but he wasn't poisoned or anything, so I didn't have a reason to need to um, slack off. He tried to stall him out, yeah. And also, I I figured he'd try to get that thing off the screen as soon as possible because you do run scold on that thing sometimes. Yeah. But um, what I have here is that you, you played a little bit better with the decisions you you made, and uh, RNG really balanced out with his uh, quick claw popping and then those misses on your side. So yeah, it really upset me because his quick claw got to earthquake my Manetric, and nothing really outspeeds a Manetric in Mega Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that's why I was like, hey, I'm not gonna say the RNG went in too far for one person, but yeah. The, just that one big misplay I said on the, the blade side, uh, I think made a big difference in how the rest of the game was played. Yeah, it, did. it made it very close. I love games where all six of each person's Pokemon come into battle. <laughs> then you must love my battles, because I can never get a big differential <laughs> win. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the next game... um. It was it was a very good game. Uh, we had the Tauros versus the Tyroars. Yeah, that was actually probably uh, halfway through made me smile because I love when this happens in the game. Uh, but you go ahead and talk, and then <laughs> we'll go with it from there. Uh, it's, I think I think this is my first point that you're gonna bring up, but uh, the toxic plays on both sides. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really do love. Um, Richard's uh, Swamper. I really do. Yeah, he, he does a lot of work with it. And for it being more of his support mon, it, you, you wouldn't think it'd do so much. No, ever since Mega Evolution, I really haven't seen this guy played like support like this. Like, I don't watch a whole lot of battles, but usually it's just for that Mega Evolution. But this guy takes hits. Yeah, it does. And um, this is the game I've had the most notes about. Um, like, uh, Tyroars, I like the way they had bulk on that Metagross, and the way they're using it as support instead of attack to set up screens and stuff to be able to take hits better for the whole team. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, what you call it? Oh, but they both made, oh, bless you. But they both made great plays the whole game. Yeah, they really did. Um, I just felt really bad because uh, the advice that you've been giving Morgan all season, 
I feel like the Tyroars implemented perfectly here. About halfway through the battle, Omastar got his shell smash off and, well, survived to one HP and yes. swept all six of the Tauros' Pokemon. I was so, like... It hurt to watch, but I was so proud. I was just like, wow, one HP. That I don't know if that was a roll or luck, but that was just like... That's one crazy way to see a game play out. Yeah. Because I, I like to go through, and when we do these recaps, I like keep track of everybody's Pokemon and what they're doing, and I was just astonished. That gave some heavy uh, kill points to that Omastar. Yeah, and um, earlier in the game, uh, Kartana getting that knockoff on the Metagross was also good, because he got rid of the light clay, so those, oh, yeah. uh, those screens really... Uh, they didn't last long. They didn't last long, and that pro it might have made the difference on that Omastar. I wasn't paying attention to when those things went out. Oh, good point, yeah. But maybe that could that was the difference right there. He did reflect first, so that light screen would have lasted a bit longer. And um, I like the uh, roar prep on the Swampert. Yeah, yeah, I do. Toxic Stealth Rocks roar. Yeah, it, I was just like, okay, there we go. There's just, I was like, Dusty's gonna comment on that for sure, because he likes to see those roars happen on those Well, not months. just for the, uh, the stealth rock damage, but, like, when people, like, prep the, like, if, uh, it would have roared that shell smash, that would have been pointless. Yeah. So, it could have made a difference later, but, you know, he tried. And, um, there was one point in the game where he had, uh... Comfagrigus facing off against the uh, Pyloswine. And um, it occurred to me uh, after the game, he was talking about a set he had on that Comfagrigus for his Milotic, which would have given uh, Milotic a Rossberry, healing a burn, and taking the Flame Orb. And he said he wanted to Flame Orb one of his physical attackers later. But clearly he didn't bring Milotic, so. He could have given uh, the Rossberry to the Piloswine and taken the Eviolite away and lowered his defenses so it would have been easier to take out. True. But, you know, he, uh, he had that, he didn't have that plan for that, so I, I'd understand that completely. And then uh, for the next game, <clears throat> we'll move on to uh, PSG versus the T-Tars. This game was deafening for the Tyranitars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, he we off. finally got to see Hypno, at least. I'm not sure if he's <laughs> used it before or not, but it's there. <laughs> and it did get him his only kill of the game. <laughs> um, I, As you can see, uh, Morgan brought all physical Pokemon. Every single one he brought was physical, which... Uh, uh, Paul took very much advantage of with that Sableye set. Uh, Prankster, will o -Wisp, crippling his whole team. Yeah, I was. that's my first big note here is Sableye put in work. Yeah, and I was, and I put here that, uh, should have probably brought more special Pokemon, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I couldn't have called, uh, Sableye coming in and doing that, but... <laughs> I, I really enjoyed uh, Sableye versus Metagross, because Metagross Meteor Mashed and got the power up, and then, um, what was it, Sableye Foul Played, which ended up powering up Foul Play. Yeah, and it took it right out. Yeah, so it was, it was like, awesome, he got the percentage for the bonus, but it backfired with Foul Play. Yeah, almost instantaneously. Yeah, like, it happened same turn, and I was just like, oh god, and I was just assuming Paul was smiling, so... <laughs> I, I'm sure Paul was smiling. He got two kills with Pukamuku. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, Sableye got a few. And then, uh, yeah, of course, his Linoon got off the Belly Drum Extreme Speed, which is deadly. The only way to really get out of that is a fighting type move and a Focus Sash, which Morgan did have on the hit. No. Very luckily. And um, I, did, I did write down here a uh, Cloister Misplay. Um, oh, I yeah. don't remember. 
I remember. Cloister. It, it was the start of the Linoon thing. Uh, Cloister obviously took damage uh, coming in. And Toxic spikes got him, too. Yeah, so Linoon set up the belly drum at the same time. Uh, Cloyster tried to shell smash, and instead of that, he, as he should have seen from Paul's uh, past games, is that that's the first thing he was going to try to do with that Linoon. So he should have just attacked first turn and then tried to shell smash later. True, true. That could I also don't know, but like in certain situations when you really need to make sure a threat like that doesn't happen, um, if his cloister's physical attack, right? Yes. Um, explosion's always a good backup for just extreme cases. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, the Linoon wasn't even set up yet, and you know Linoon's not going to hit hard unless it gets that plus six belly drum. So I don't know who's faster, Cloister or Linoon. Like, would the belly drum have gone off before Cloister would have attacked? Um, or is Cloister fast? I believe, yeah, Linoon would have went first, but he would have still got that. It would have been half damage and easier to take out. True, yeah, you have to pay, what, half your life for belly drum? Yeah, so, I mean, due to skill link, I feel like Cloister would have killed regardless, but, I mean, he could have done that instead of letting, uh, Letting the Linoon set up and knowing that it uses extreme speed to sweep. Right. Yeah. And that could have changed the, the play of the game. Not by much, since the rest of his team was pretty much crippled by that Sableye. But, yeah. It, it could have lowered the differential a little bit. But, um, <clears throat> for the next game, we have... The Chartreuse versus the Kings. This is my game, so I, I won't say too much about it. But um, I didn't play great. I played all right, and uh, I tried to pull uh, Mawile in too soon to try to sweep up, and it was too early for it. So uh, his Jolteon took advantage. Uh, his Jolteon. Let's uh, talk about that for a second. That was a substitute leftovers Jolteon, which I... Really don't see a whole lot of. Yeah, I think he. I think he brought it in at the same time of my uh, Mawile, and I think he brought it in so I couldn't take it out with the sucker punch. So he knew I was gonna set up first, and he'd substitute, and then he'd deal with me later. And sucker punch would only break the sub, and <clears throat> he would still be doing work with that Jolteon. Yeah. He did something at the beginning that kind of confused me. He he threw in Bronzong first, and he set up a Stealth Rock, but then he switched into Blastoise, and then switched right back into Bronzong, like against your Sock. I wasn't sure what was going on there. Or it was Sock or Throw, whoever you had. Yeah, Sock. Um, I, I brought Sock uh, because it had Mold Breaker, and I knew uh, Earthquake hit pretty much everything on his team because he didn't really have a Flyer. And I brought the sock specifically for the Bronzong. And uh, ev evidently at the end of that little turnaround, I got lucky with the high roll that took it out after it consumed it to bury. I also did notice that your Lycanroc tried to use the Z electric move, and then he switched in his, his Needle Queen and absorbed it, which I thought was sad. Yeah, he got he got me on that. I was really hoping that Z move would take out the the Blastoise, and the reason I would I left it in on the Blastoise was because I'd figure he'd think, all right, I could take this out with the water move, boom. But no, I guess he saw that coming. And then you, speaking of your Lycanroc, uh, won you the game there at the end. Yeah, he got me. Uh, he got me with that lucky crit on Nido Queen at the end. And then uh, Excel Rock just uh, took out the rest of his team. Yeah, that was that poor B drill. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you blow a gust of wind on it and it dies. Yeah, yeah. But his Needle Queen was deadly. Like, he made that thing perfect. Yeah, she's. Like, usually you hear about Needle King doing stuff, but he's definitely using Needle Queen fun. Oh, yeah, and if I no notice, I don't think anyone actually has a Needle King. I don't think so. 
So, I mean, I guess since it's uh, Tier 2, I guess it was more higher prospects on there. But Nido Queen being a Tier 3, she she gets the work done. Yeah. And uh, he had a, he had a nice Volt Turn core with uh, Beedrill and Jolteon. But uh, I think... Yeah. I personally think uh, he did... He tried doing a little too much with the Jolteon there at the end. Volt switching on uh, Lycanroc. I feel like he should have set up the sub or just went straight out Thunderbolt and it would have probably took me out. Yeah, Lycanroc's... He hits hard, but he really doesn't have a lot of defense. Yeah, not as much as I would like, you know. But uh, I did put that he did have the perfect game plan. Uh, I just got some crits in my favor that uh, gave me the advantage. Yeah. But Stewart, I was discussing this with Dusty yesterday, and the crits might not have been as lucky as you think. Oh, because of Drill Run? Yes, Drill Run actually gets a boost in crit ratio. So instead of a 1 in 16 chance, it gets a 1 in 8. So I feel less bad about the crit, but still wish I wouldn't have got it. <clears throat> uh, I'm actually kind of happy you got it. You need a little RNG there. And Lycan <laughs> Rock was blessed by it, I think. There. Oh yeah, especially Tough Claws Drill Run. And those Excel Rocks. Oh, yes. I needed the priority. And uh, for the Mini Ors versus the Polyraths, we actually oh, had a substitute coach fill in for Paul Bolger because uh, he's having personal issues. So we had uh, Josh Reisinger fill in for the Mini Ors coaching. And uh, Marquise, being, uh, being not ready for it, I guess, since... Uh, Paul and Josh do not have the same play style whatsoever. Yeah, uh, Josh. <clears throat> uh, he made me like his Frost last a little too much. He just had the taunt at the right time. Um, yeah, he just knew how to switch his Pokemon. He knew exactly what he needed right when he needed it. I think he brought a great assortment to absorb blows. Oh, yeah. He, he didn't do great with the predictions, and Took advantage of the frost last, not getting any damage from that milk tank. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> the milk tank. I assume it was a misgen on uh, Marquise's part. But Frustration definitely was a bad choice. Yeah, he did one to no damage every time he used frustration. And because facade would touch frost last, and she had what was it that thing that disabled? moves he couldn't really return her constantly <clears throat> yeah so it was just like a facade whatever he was doing yeah facade so he pretty much got screwed over in that sense uh but it was great tech that he brought uh sc uh scrappy knowing yeah. that uh paul had two or josh had two ghost type pokemon on his side um yeah yeah that's a really good move i always forget she's scrappy because she has kind of a a worse Special defense, I always like Thick Fat for fire and ice moves. It just gives her that extra defense that she normally needs. But it was a good call on his part. Oh, yeah. And uh, the better part on Josh's battle was um, he found out that Starm was Scarf early on. Yeah. And I personally wouldn't have thought that it was Scarf that early in the game. <clears throat> but the way he made his switches on it, it showed that he was very comfortable knowing that it was scarfed in some way, shape, or form. Which surprised me, because Starmie is naturally really fast. Uh, yeah, I also put that. It was a questionable item choice for Starmie, in my opinion. But, like, as soon as, as we, like, I figured that out, too, with his switches on it. Because uh, I was really worried when he sent Chandelure in against it later in the game, but then I was like, oh, it's locked into the move, he doesn't have to worry. Yeah, so I was just like, well, may maybe if uh, he would have put, um like, Expert Belt instead of Choice Scarf, uh, it would have been a whole lot better. Maybe he meant to put Choice Specs. I yeah, know. I was thinking that, too, about maybe the Specs, because they're all Choice. Yeah. But, um yeah, I, I feel like there could have been a better item for the Sarmie, and it would have helped him better throughout the whole game. And then last but not least, the game of the week. 
to show who would be in first place in the Alola division. Gators versus Rapidash. I'll let you talk about this one because I did not get to take notes on it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it started off actually pretty pretty evenly matched. We do have that mob champ on the Gator side with no guard, so that dynamic punch always gets its hit, uh, which is just so derpy, but I really like it. Um, it actually took a long time for the first kill to happen. It took, I would say, maybe like 10 turns or so. Um, they were just really good at switching in what they needed. Uh, I think the first kill was Gliger. That Ma Champ had like a hidden ice punch or two there. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that point, once once the Gators started getting that uh, momentum going, it slowed down a bit once Muck and Vaporeon fought each other because Vaporeon is a wish protector and Muck is a, a berry-eating substituter. It took a little bit, but as soon as <laughs> Muck took Vaporeon down, I think Vaporeon got poisoned, that's what. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, very good getting that uh, boosted poison on that poison jab. That's but then... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, but once Dragonite came into play, um, <laughs> he swept up very nicely. Oh, yes, and that Dragon Dance, probably Marvel skill to reduce that first hit, it puts in work. And that's what I did get put put down from what I saw when I was recording, is uh, the Gators just had amazing prep. He pretty much seemed like he had something for everything that Reginald could have brought. So <clears throat> that that Marvel scale gets me every time because he'll dragon dance and then like that Naganadel is frightening and it didn't even take half the damage off a of Dragonite because of Marvel scale and you, when you think of it cutting that in half like that Dragonite's ability is actually really good for setting up a first turn dragon dance. Oh yeah, <laughs> he basically gets to set up for free every time. That I, I should know because that thing five owed me earlier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but you, you got your little payback with Swallow. <laughs> that bird saves me a lot. But, um, yeah, Reginald, for going being undefeated this long, everyone has to get a loss eventually. But he still played great, so it's going to be great to see what happens next week and see who gets that bye week for each division and see who has to play the first round of the playoffs. <clears throat> so, as everyone knows... Each division has three teams going to the playoffs. The number one seed in each division will get a bye week. And the second and third place teams in the division will have to play the first round to see who plays each other in the Kanto Championship and the Alola Championship. And then the winners of them will go to the PML Championship for Season 2. And as of right now... Let's not think about that. Let's go to the kill leaders. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, in first place, we have Naganadel with 15 kills. Second place, we have Mega Scizor with 11 kills. And third place, we have that dastardly Dragon Knight in ni- with 9 kills. I will note that 5 of them are from me. <laughs> and yes, these Pokemon are very deadly. And most likely, the two best Pokemon from each division will be the captains of the Pro Bowl team, or Pro Pokeball team. Great ball. Whatever y'all want to call it. (laughs) But, um, yes. They will be the team captains of those basically superstar teams. And we will vote for the coaches that play and coach for those teams. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, that's it for us. Please go check out PML Group on Facebook. We have doubles league starting soon, and you don't want to miss out.